So we're gonna start with some breathing. Um, if you do have, okay, and shoulders, definitely. You got it. Sounds good. And I'll just wait one more minute to see if anything else comes up. Hey, Lori. Long time no see. Yeah, so we'll start with about 15 minutes of breathing, um, maybe 20. Um, and then, hey, Catherine. And Deb. And neck, you got it, definitely. Neck and shoulders goes together every time. <laughs> um, does everyone have two blocks? If you do not have two blocks, just let me know. Um, and then I will give options for practicing with and without. Okay, um, I'll keep my eyes peeled. If anyone has another request, just speak up or <laughs> write it <laughs> and I will read it and accommodate you. All right, so we're gonna start in Baddha Konasana or Cobbler's Pose. <clears throat> Make sure you've got space behind you on your mat. Come down gradually. I like to support myself with my hands as I lower. Once I'm all the way there, I walk my feet to me. I take the feet together and the knees wide. And we're looking to take the soles of the feet together <clears throat> quite evenly. So the inner heels, the outer heels, the big toe mounds, the baby toe mounds are equally pressing together. And then we think of lengthening the inner groins to the inner knees, drawing the outer knees toward the outer hips. Maybe you can pull the femurs toward the hip sockets. <clears throat> oh, okay, no worries, Stacey. I will talk you through everything without blocks or just do things that don't require them either way. Okay, cool. And if anyone does have a question, just write it in there and I'll, uh, if I see it, I will answer. I will try to keep my eyes peeled. All right. Hey, Daisy. Hi, sweetie. Okay. So once you're on your back, once you've selected your position for your legs, you're gonna rest your arms beside you, let your palms face up. Lie down, baby. Close your eyes or fix your gaze, bringing your mind to your abdomen. With each inhale, feel your abdomen expanding as though it were a balloon. With each exhalation, feel the abdomen contracting, lungs emptying, continuously focusing on the movement of your breath, the movement of the abdomen. Perhaps you can even feel the breath wrapping around toward the side, toward the lower back. Sometimes it's nice to put a little bit of weight on the abdomen, say you have a block or a book or a pillow whatever weight you like, you can place that on the body if you want to increase the resistance that the lungs encounter as you breathe. And more rounds of breath, abdomen expanding, contracting. Remember, if you don't have blocks and you want to support your hips, place whatever you have handy. Pretty much anything will work as long as it doesn't cut into the flesh too much and it provides sufficient support. If you don't have anything at all, you rest as many times as you like. You bring your knees together, your feet a bit apart as many times as you need. Staying longer is useful up into the, up, you know, to the degree of um, moderate effort. We still want to be able to breathe relatively easily even if we were doing something very difficult, like standing on our heads or holding a plank or what have you. 
And returning to your natural breathing. Remember, you can make adjustments with your legs at any time. If it suits you, stay longer. Reach your fingers towards the ceiling. Optional, of course. Right hand to left elbow, left hand to right. Squeezing opposite elbows with the fingers and palms as you pull the elbows apart. Try to engage each and every digit, especially the little fingers and ring fingers. Elbow push-ups or shoulder push-ups. Elbows lift to ceiling. Upper arm bones sink toward floor. Create as much movement as you can with the humerus bone or the upper arm bone. Keep pulling the elbows apart as you do. Three more. Neck, jaw, face, free of tension. And finding extension of those elbows, those upper arms with no tension in your neck. You want to be able to easily move your neck from side to side. If that's not the case, reduce the extension. Only do what feels really good. And then from here, taking your elbows into circles, gradually growing those circles until they're as big as you like. Hey, Daisy. Go lie down. Lie down. Once those circles are as large as they can be, let's aim for three more. You can always do a bit more, a bit less, based on how you're feeling. Changing direction when you're ready to do so. Three more. Go as big as you like. Try to maintain resistance between those elbows. Now, digging elbows toward the legs, toward overhead, all alternating. Continue at a pace that suits you. Think of an external rotation in the upper arm if that makes sense to you. As the arms are coming overhead, it's as though the outer upper arm rolls toward the floor, as though the inner upper arm could roll toward the ceiling. Three more. Listen to your knee joints, listen to the lower back. Do not force or strain to maintain the position for the hips. It's always okay to change your position. Coming toward overhead, maybe you come to the forehead to rest, maybe you come over the crown of the head to rest on the floor, maybe you hover, maybe you find you want a little bit of something to rest on, you can use whatever you have handy, it doesn't matter what you use as long as it Provide sufficient support. This is a great option. A block, a book, whatever you've got. <clears throat> Continue to pull the elbows apart. Draw the front ribs towards one another and toward the ground. Maybe broaden the back rib cage. If it sounds like Greek, let it go in one ear and out the other. Take your attention to the rib cage. With each inhale, feel the rib cage expanding. Out to the sides, up into space. Perhaps you can feel the breath wrapping around toward the back ribs. With each exhalation, follow the contraction of the rib cage, contraction of the lungs within the space of the rib cage. Continue at your own pace. Concentrate on the expansion and contraction of the rib cage. Good job, perfect.
With your next exhalation, return to your natural breathing. Bring the elbows in front of you if you brought them overhead. Lengthen the arms towards the ceiling. Make any adjustments you need to make. You can bring your legs together anytime. Have the knees touching the feet apart, pigeon turning the feet a little. You can straighten the legs anytime. When you're ready to, left hand to right elbow, right hand to left, squeezing opposite elbows as you pull the elbows apart. Try to have the wrist wrinkle free, squeeze with every digit. Elbows lift to ceiling, upper arm bones sink to floor. Three more. An extension of tension, take yourself into some circles. Start small, gradually grow, maintain that resistance. Should you ever find it agitating to have the eyes closed, fix the gaze on one spot. Try to resist the urge to blink, it will have a similar benefit in terms of concentration. Changing direction now. Furthermore, giving yourself space at any time in this practice to take Shavasana, to rest in any way that suits you. When a lot of external stress is acting on our systems, it's especially important to give ourselves extra space, extra permission to be as we are and as we need to be. Being here now. If you haven't changed direction, changing direction now, exploring a similar number of circles, a similar range, keeping that resistance as you do so. When you sufficiently moved in the circles, take the elbows toward overhead, toward the legs next, going for a range that feels good. If you're in a more bendy body, you've got a little more hypermobility going on, like myself, then I highly encourage more resistance. Focus on pulling <clears throat> the joints apart. Focus on contracting the musculature surrounding the joints. Find all the small alignments that work best for you in terms of cultivating muscular engagement. <clears throat> to support the ligaments, to support the joints. Coming toward overhead, when you're ready to hold, feel free to move as much as you like into the shoulders, finding stillness when you feel ready to do so. And should it be too much to reach the arms toward overhead in this fashion or at the forehead, try crossing the arms in front of you. Try resting them beside you. Alter the position whenever you need. Attention goes to the upper chest and shoulders. Big inhale, full exhale. Feeling the sternum lift, the collarbones broaden. Maybe you can feel the breath wrap round toward the upper back. Exhaling to empty, contracting the lungs. Continuously focusing on the movement of the upper chest and shoulders. Should you ever experience agitation or anxiety associated with controlling your breath, doing less, 
or taking a break from the breath control, coming back to it when you are ready. <clears throat> Five more breaths, the sternum lifting and sinking, upper back expanding, contracting. breath when you are ready to do so. Please do not rush. Elbows in front of you, lengthening fingers towards ceiling, resting the arms beside you. <clears throat> if you haven't yet done so, support your knees and bring your knees together. Knees touching, walking the feet apart, the outer edges of the feet are parallel. We spread our toes, we squeeze our knees and thighs as we pull our ankles apart. <clears throat> so even though it feels like we're pigeon-toed, we're thinking outer edges of feet, right? So we're not fully pigeon-toed, but it feels as though we are. Yeah, I totally agree, Stacey. My uh, shoulder pain or nerve pain in my elbows and shoulders completely disappears when I do that uh, pulling apart of the elbows among other things, but that one makes such a big difference. And if you find it, you know, in life as well, when you're trying to like lift something and kind of imagine you've got some resistance going in between the elbow and the shoulder, the wrist and the elbow, the elbows against one another and away from one another, before you know it, all those little stabilizing muscles make such a difference everywhere, not just in your yoga practice. But the more bendy you are, the harder it is to keep the muscles going. <laughs> it's more work, but it's worth it. All right. So letting the arms be heavy beside you, they can be closer to you for less of a stretch, higher to shoulder for more. You could do a 90 degree angle bend. You could have the arms toward overhead. You could interlace the hands or stack the palms and place them under the head like a bit of a pillow. All of these would work. <clears throat> Big inhale to fill the lungs, full exhalation to empty every last drop of air. And inhaling to fill the abdomen. When the abdomen is full, breath spills to the rib cage. When the rib cage is full, breath spills to the upper chest and shoulders. And we empty the lungs from top to bottom. Continuing with a wave of breath up and down the spine. Imagine not only the front of the body filling with breath, but also the sides and the back body. Lungs expand in all directions from the spine. Lungs contract from all directions toward the spine. Ten more waves of breath up and down the spine.
natural breath when you are ready. Please do not rush. Stay longer if you like. Walk knees and ankles together if they were wide. Picking up one foot and then the other, taking your hands to your shins or maybe interlacing the fingers. <clears throat> you can hold behind your thighs or loop a strap or any kind of tie or whatever you have over your shins too. Spread your toes, squeeze the legs together, try to lengthen the pubic bone away from you, and then imprint the lower back. Thighs away from you, thighs toward you. Pulsing thighs away toward, pubic bone away toward. Take that side to side. Lengthening hip creases or um, hip flexor area away from armpits. Femurs pulling toward hip sockets. <clears throat> Turning this into circles. Very good, go the other way. Again, pulse the thighs away from you, toward you. Remembering to switch the grip of the hands. If that's relevant for you, it might not be. Don't worry about it either way. And once more, side to side. And you can always take the legs farther apart for any of those movements to reduce pressure in the hips and the abdomen and the back. If you want more pressure, legs closer, legs squeezing more. If it's easy to squeeze, you pull them apart too. Come back to center, bring the left foot to the floor in line uh, with the pubic bone. Cross the right leg tightly over the left. Try to have very little space between the legs, if any. Think of squeezing the legs together, taking the right hip toward the end of the mat, the pubic bone toward the end of the mat. Hip bones equal distance from shoulders and floor. Try to pull the femurs toward the hip sockets, squeeze the outer trochanters towards one another. If that makes a lot of sense, try to pull the thighs apart as well. Try to pull the bones together and apart. If you want more, walk your left foot closer. If you want less, walk your foot farther away. If your foot's quite close and you still want more, you can add a block or anything you have handy. It does not need to be an actual block. It could be a book or any other item you have that might be useful in this case. You could use a pot. I mean, really, anything you like. <laughs> as long as it feels stable and comfortable. <clears throat> Hands can be used behind thighs. Strap of any kind could be used behind thighs in which case you could rest the elbows on the floor. So these are all good possibilities. Right hip continues to go away from armpit and we point and flex our ankles. Choosing whichever one you like. Whatever option you go for, see if you can get straight rest going. That's a really nice option if possible. You can always just hold the legs up here too with your, uh, your core. And think internal resistance. Circles, O's with the toes. If you do happen to bind with the strap or with the thigh, think thighs away. Think about pulling opposite directions with the thighs and hands. Inner upper arm to ceiling, outer upper arm to floor. Maybe the elbows pull apart as well. It's very relevant here. Whether the arms are beside you and you pull the elbows apart or whether you're engaging with the hands, either way. Flexing, curling, pointing, flipping. Flex your feet, curl your toes, point your feet. Flip your toes, flexing, curling, pointing, flipping once more. Good, five more breaths, flex your feet, spread your toes, squeeze the legs, take them away from you, shoulders toward floor and apart, lifting armpit chest. Neck is neutral, we don't wanna be looking overhead, we don't wanna be looking toward the legs, we're looking straight up. If you get a big chin lift here, that's a really good indicator. You want a little height under your head, a little bit of a pillow under the head. will take the pressure out of the neck and shoulders and upper back. Good, and then left foot to floor. Draw the right knee toward you. Take your hands behind your thigh or your strap behind your thigh. Take the right hip toward the end of the mat. Straighten your knee, bend your knee a few times, and then straighten and hold straight. Left foot can push into floor as you take the right hip to the end of the mat. If the left leg needs to straighten, that's relevant for you, then go for it. If you want to work a little bend in the knee as you were dragging your heels to you, I highly recommend it. All 
Uh, taking your right leg towards your left, trying not to allow the left leg to change, keeping the knee pointing direct, the left knee pointing directly to the ceiling, whether your knee is bent or straight. And you can be anywhere in between if you like. Good. Perfect. <clears throat> Remember, you can even, with this left or uh, right leg especially, you can bend and straighten here too, which often can feel fabulous in the IT band. Or if your glutes have any uh, residual tension from, you know, the last yoga practice you did, <laughs> or a hike, or a glute workout, or whatever it is. All right, and then come on back to center. Take your right leg towards your right now, not allowing the right hip to come toward the shoulder, but think right hip toward end of mat. Right, external rotation of the right hip to create a neutral knee. Not going as far as you can, but going to a point where you could hold it, right? If you didn't have your hands, could you still hold a neutral pelvis or would you flop over, right? So find a space where you can maintain with uh, muscular integrity, shoulders are equally engaged. Great to use a strap, great to use hands. Great to use just your muscles. All of these are good pops options, really. And one's not better than another. They're just different ways to do the same thing, right? And again, you can bend and straighten here if you like, if you've got a good pelvis. I mean, we all have good pelvises. I mean, is if your pelvis isn't moving on you very much. <clears throat> Sometimes that can feel quite nice. And you can hinge the knee a little bit or a lot. It doesn't matter what kind of range we're working on, as long as it feels good and you're not working into any pain. Good, and then when you're ready, come on back to center. Take your hands to interlace over the right shin, bending the right knee. Release both feet to the floor, knees and ankles together. Cross left leg over right now. Tight crossing, no space between legs or very little space. Think pubic bone lengthening away from you, trying to create a lumbar curve. <clears throat> Think left hip toward end of mat, pubic bone toward end of mat, pulling femurs to hip sockets. If you want less, walk your foot farther away from you. If you want more, go closer. If you still want more, you can lift your heel, slide a book, a block, whatever you've got, a pot <laughs> underneath your, uh, your foot. You can use your hands or your strap behind your thighs. All of these are good options. Choose whichever you like. <clears throat> Think of squeezing the legs together, pulling the thighs apart. Maybe you can pull the femurs toward the hip sockets more. Maybe you can find the trochanters. Pointing and flexing if you like. And if pulling the femurs down into the hip socket starts to make sense, eventually you can start to lift the sacrum up at the same time. And it sounds pretty ridiculous at first. It's like, can I really move my sacrum? Um, but if you think about it enough, eventually it will happen. Pointing for circles. And you get quite a, a, a lovely release um, in the lumbar. Not to mention the, just the very low back part of the pelvis there. Go the other way. And if you have, say, nervy SI joints or nervy tailbone, can make quite a difference. And then flexing, curling, pointing, flipping. Flexing, curling, pointing, flipping. Once more. Flex the feet, think outer shoulder to the floor, inner upper arm to ceiling, pull the elbows apart if you can. Same idea whether you're using your hands to hold the legs or whether your arms are on the ground, you're still pulling those arms apart. <clears throat> you know, if I, if I were physically there and I were to come and touch your arm, it, your arm wouldn't go anywhere. Your arms are quite strong, right? They're not just kind of fluffy. All right, and then right foot returning to floor, draw the left knee towards you. Take your hands behind your thigh or your strap behind your thigh. Think left hip toward end of mat. Don't let the left side of the body shorten here. Not worth it. What we're looking for is the hip bones equal distance from the shoulders, equal distance from the ceiling if we can manage it. We want to lengthen the pubic bone from us. <clears throat> Resistance against thigh and hand. Straighten and bend a few times. Don't be surprised if this side feels completely different. Well, that is normal. Straighten as much as you like and hold there. Right leg can straighten as much as you want as well. It does not matter how straight, right? Perfectly straight legs, eh, not that useful. 
slightly bent knees, much more useful. We don't want to let our legs roll out here. We're thinking of squeezing an imaginary block with those inner thighs. <clears throat> From here, left leg works towards right. We're not letting the right leg change. Knee can be bent, knee can be straight. I recommend flexing the ankle and being just on the heel if you work towards a straight leg. That'll keep you more aware of whether that right leg is changing. You can remain still or you can bend and straighten the left knee if you fancy it. You'll just want to watch out with, for your right leg if it is more bent. You can also hold straight or hold somewhere in between. Think equal length of both sides of torso. Hips to armpits, equal length. And then right on back to center, take your leg over to your left, left leg towards your left. And again, you're not letting all the weight sink. You don't want the right side of the pelvis to be lifting here. That's not your objective to go as far as you can. It's to keep the pelvis neutral. So you're pushing and you're pulling with the hands against the thigh. You're thinking left hip toward end of mat so that knee is, your left knee is pointing directly overhead. It's not pointing out, it's not pointing in. Same with the foot and toes. You're grounding into the right buttocks, right side of pelvis firmly, and really contracting the right glute quite a bit in the right thigh. I drag my heel to me a little bit, whether my knee is bent or my knee is straight, I'm still dragging the heel towards me. And then I only go as far as I can while maintaining all of that, right? So it's all well and good to go as far as you can, but what's the point <clears throat> if you don't have control over the range, right? So wherever you go, if you can't maintain it without your hands, question you know, how much you're doing and perhaps do a little less and find a lot of stability there. Um, and before you know it, <clears throat> your joints will be that much happier for it. And I speak from experience. I used to have pain in a lot of different areas. <laughs> At least half a dozen. And you can bend and straighten here too. Hands, no hands, whatever suiting you. Maintain neutrality in those hips as much as humanly possible. <clears throat> Good, and then right on back to center, bend the left knee, fingers interlace over the shin, right leg straight or bent, your preference. So get more stretch into the front of that right hip if you're needing it. If it's already a lot with the knee bent, don't add straightening there. It'll increase it too much, likely. That being said, be your own boss. Experiment. See what suits you. A little different day to day. Good, and then release the feet to the floor. From here, <clears throat> we're going to do a little bit of hip work, and you can do this with or without a block. If you don't have a block, it's especially important that you keep your uh, pelvis as still as possible. And you can do this one leg at a time or you can do it both legs together. So I'll show you a few different ways. So feet a hips distance apart, pelvis on the floor is the first option. Right knee lifts or right foot lifts and you draw zeros with the right knee with your fingers on your hip bones and you're trying not to let the weight distribution in the hips change at all. Not one iota. You're trying to keep the left knee very, very still as though you were squeezing a block with that left thigh and you're making circles, zeros with that right knee. And you go as big as you can without creating any disturbance in the hips, without moving the hips. Only the right femur is moving. Let's go the other way. And I'll take you through the, the options one at a time, and you can increase the difficulty as much as you want. Or stick with option one depending on how you're feeling. Good, and then switching. Circles on the left side. And again, you're maintaining right leg very, very still. You're contracting the, the buttocks, the abdomen, the rib cage to try and maintain stillness in the body and isolate it, the movement to that left leg. Change direction. If you're doing it right, if you're keeping stillness and integrity in the body here, the only thing moving is that left leg, 
then it should be a challenge. All right, and then from here, both feet on the floor. So if that was really comfortable, then you can increase the difficulty by either adding a block, doing both legs at the same time, or working with straight legs. And I'll show you all of these options and you can pick and choose based on your own body. So the second option would be lifting both feet, again, keeping pelvis very still, and then drawing circles with both knees at the same time. So knees go away from you, away from one another, toward you, toward one another. And the bigger these circles become, the more you're going to feel in terms of stretch and in terms of muscular effort in general, right? So you'll play with that and you'll want to do the same number of circles in each direction. And if you're in a bendy body, you don't let your rib cage move. Trust me on that. You want to be rooting into the whole rib cage, particularly the back rib cage. All right. Even better, the back bottom ribs. Anyways, next option from there. <clears throat> if you happen to have a block or a book or something you can put beneath your pelvis that's um, uh, comfortable, then you can do it with a block underneath. Feet at hips distance, you can either do one leg at a time, equal number on each side, right? Just like I demonstrated earlier. You can do it with both feet lifted and then knee circles like so, both at the same time. And you'd want to do the same number in each direction so you'll keep track on your own. Because I can't keep track for you, unfortunately. <laughs> one day it will be back in a normal class environment though. Um, and then the last option is to work with straight legs. And again, you can do one leg at a time. If you're thinking, well, I might want to work with straight legs, but it's a bit much. Left foot can stay on the floor. <clears throat> or you can do both. And if you do both, move slowly. Try to keep the weight distribution really, really even on the pelvis. And if it feels good, you can make your circles bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until the range is what you want. You decide how much work is appropriate for how you feel today. And whenever you've done, you know, the number that feels good, then you change direction. And don't be surprised if one direction is completely different than the other. Circles that require internal rotation <clears throat> and circles that require external rotation of the hip really cultivate different areas, like the adductors, the abductors, in different, in different ways. So it really makes a difference. <clears throat> I've got 10 more breaths to play with that. Nice, and then when you're ready, you'll bring both feet to the floor one at a time or together. And then once your feet are on the ground, <clears throat> take as long a rest as you like. And then we're gonna come into little bridge pose or set bundle. So in order to do so, if you are on a block or a book or your pelvis is on height, you're gonna lift three times to remove the height. If you're not on height, you hang out as you are. And if you happen to have something you can put between your thighs, then great, go for it. And if you don't, imagine you've got something there. Even better, really, because it'll make your mind even stronger <clears throat> than uh, if the block does some of the work for you. Anywho, if you're on height, lift three times, remove the height, place it beside you, come down as slow as you can, and then block can be between thighs if you have one. If you want to take a moment to straighten the legs or hug the legs or anything of that nature, please feel free to do so. Never rushing, always allowing yourself longer rests at any time. In terms of options for the arms, you can straighten the arms, think outer shoulder to the floor, inner upper arm to ceiling, internal rotation of forearm to push into the base of palm and index finger, especially the base of the um, thumb and index, as I say. I like to spread my fingers or squeeze them together. Both are valuable. Third option would be bent elbows. You can do fists, you can do fingers together, you can spread them, lots of options. Uh, you got another option, if you had a strap, you could loop it over the shin, just like so. This would be really good for your neck, Doug, if you have a strap or something you could use in that way. <clears throat> and it simulates uh, grabbing the ankle, so it gives you a really firm external rotation in the shoulder. Anyways, you lengthen the flesh of the buttocks, you're going to lift the buttocks, the lower back, the mid back, the upper back, come into your bridge, whatever version you like. <clears throat> And when it comes uh, to holding, you hold as long as feels good for you. There's no particular length of time that you must stay. 
If you find this one quite comfortable, you can stay longer, then feel free to play with the toes. You can lift and lower the toes, keeping the toe mounds on the floor, of course. You can lift all the toes and tap the big toes, trying to keep all the other toes away from the ground. That's a great challenge. You can alternate big toes on the floor, all the other toes on the floor going back and forth. Or it can be plenty to push into the toes. Try to take 10 more breaths. Allow yourself a rest at any time. And whenever you decide it's sufficient, and it can be in 10 breaths time, it can be now, it can be in three breaths, but when you decide it's enough, I'll talk you through your options for resting. Stay as long as you like, and when it is enough, you lower one disc, one vertebra at a time, as slowly as humanly possible. Try to lengthen the pelvis away from the skull as you do. Once you have come out, and please do not rush, if you've got a block, you'll put it beside you. You can extend your legs, that is one option. Extending arms as well, doesn't feel good. Keep your knees bent. You might go side to side. Another option still, you can tuck the legs. Stay still, go side to side. Lots of options there. When you're ready to, feet will come to the ground. You're gonna roll to one side, you're gonna push yourselves up. And we'll come on to hands and knees. <clears throat> so you can spread your fingers on the ground here, tuck your toes, get a good grip. Think inner upper arm forward, outer upper arm back. If you have blocks, feel free to have your hands up on uh, blocks. You can wrap your fingers around the front of them if you've got sensitive wrists. You can also be on your elbows if you prefer. Fingers can interlace, hands can squeeze around a book, a block, whatever you've got. And then from here, think external rotation, upper arm, and then pull the elbows apart. So it's almost as though you're externally rotating the upper arm, internally rotating the lower arm to pull the elbows apart and push into the base of the index finger and the uh, thumb. And this helps to create less pressure in the outer wrist. Round the back, tuck the chin, press the floor away. Fingers and toes pushing firmly into the ground. And then chest lifting, abdomen lifting, looking up, pulling collarbones apart, and taking the outer shoulder a little bit back. Rounding the back, tucking the chin, pressing the floor away. Gaze lifting, sit bones lifting, looking up. Spine rounding, chin tucking, pushing floor away. Gaze lifting, sit bones lifting, looking up. Continuing at your own pace. spine, point your feet, drag the heels away from you, and circles with your hips. Try to keep the lift in the ankles if you can. Going the other way. Good, and then stopping with your circles, tuck your toes, get a good grip. And then we've got a few options. Hips come towards the heels to the extent that suits you, don't force it. And not letting the abdomen sink, but lifting the abdomen and the ribs a little bit. You can put a block underneath your forehead or a book or whatever you've got in handy. <clears throat> the higher the height, the more support you're gonna get. The lower the height, the less support. 
You can also use your fists stacking or your palms stacking underneath your forehead. If feeling more in the shoulder suits you, you can straighten out your arms if you like. Thinking inner upper arm towards ceiling, outer upper arm towards the floor. We want our forehead to hover in this case. The ears are between the biceps or just between the upper arm area. If that felt really nice, you could lengthen hip creases away from armpits and vice versa to lift up the knees, perhaps. Continuing to lengthen the spine and the back body here. Feeling the back of the body expand and contract with every round of breathing. If you do choose to lift the knees, you can straighten your legs as much as you like. However, you will find it much, much easier to lengthen your spine and find a neutral pelvis if you bend your knees a bit and think of lifting the sit bones and lengthening them away from the armpits, away from the ribs, I'll give you more space. Your spine will become significantly longer. It'll be easier to straighten your legs. And why not make the posture more easeful if we can? We always want equal proportion of effort and knees. Sierra, Sukha, Asanam. Up to 10 more breaths, any version you like. Remember, there is not one version that is better than another. They are all beneficial. have not yet done so allow your knees to lower let your feet point bring the knees a little bit wide bring the hips towards your heels you can place a block under your forehead you can stack fists or palms under the forehead you want your elbows a bit wide for these options you can extend your arms and rest the head on the ground if you're looking for more come up onto your fingertips continuing to externally rotate and pull the elbows apart <clears throat> If you did have blocks or something you could use underneath your hands, you can also put height underneath the hands, which will increase what you feel in your shoulders even more so. Outer shoulder toward the floor, armpits toward the ceiling. And I also think of lengthening the inner upper arm from the armpit toward the elbow as I pull my elbows apart. That's a funny alignment, but if it makes sense, try, or if it might make sense, give it a shot. Take 10 more breaths, body expanding, body contracting. <clears throat> Alrighty, and then coming forward onto the hands and knees here. I'm going to do a couple stretches for the feet. Take the right toes, tuck them, slide them farther away than the heel. Try to keep the hips equal distance from the floor. And then heel further away than toes. <clears throat> and then we swap. Left toes farther away than heel. Heel farther away than toes. And then from there, <clears throat> we're going to come into one of two positions. So we can do this on um, the abdomen or we can do this on the hands and knees. So I'll show you the hands and knees version first and then I'll show you the abdomen version. All right. 
So if you're on your hands and knees, that's all good. It's not going to be painful to be on just one wrist at a time. Then this is an option, okay? So you start by extending the left leg, toes tucked, and extending the right arm, fingers on the floor. This is a great option to stay. We don't let the back collapse. We find the abdomen, we find the ribs, we keep them stable. We want more, we lift the left leg, we lift the right arm. We don't lift them higher than the spine, all right? <clears throat> we're lifting the abdomen, the ribs, we're breathing, all right? If not comfortable to do so, onto your belly. Right arm lifts, left leg lifts, forehead stays down. You're thinking of lengthening the flesh of the buttocks here and lifting the abdomen as you lift your leg and your arm, all right? <clears throat> too much to go directly in front. You can try them out like an airplane too and just try lifting the leg. So all good ways to work the same type of position. Just a few more breaths. And if you've got bendy elbows and you're doing the tabletop position, don't let it hyperextend. Think about a little bend. It'll still likely be straight, but not too straight. <laughs> Good, and then release if you haven't yet. Swap sides on the abdomen, on the um, hands and knees, whatever your preference. Reach the left fingertips forward, the right toes back, either stay here, or try floating the foot, try floating the arm, maybe one or the other, maybe both. Not allowing the spine to change, find an equal engagement, lengthening the fingers and toes away from one another. You can point the right foot or you can flex. <clears throat> If you're doing the belly or on the belly version, you want to lengthen the flesh of the buttocks, lift that lower abdomen very firmly. And if you're in tabletop, you can tuck the toes of the left foot or have them pointed, whatever suits your knee joints more. Make sure you fold over your mat if you begin to feel the knees any. Pardon me, and then release. And then from here, if you're on the abdomen, you can either repeat one and then the other, or you can do all four lifting this time if you like. <clears throat> Those of us in tabletop, you have the following option. So you can either repeat, right leg forward, left leg back, lift. <clears throat> or you can reach the right arm forward, the left leg back, hold there. And then see if you can take the right arm to the right, internally rotate so the palm faces up towards the ceiling and then bend your elbow. See if you can take your hand to your lower back or your mid back with the palm facing up. If you want more, bend your left knee. Pardon me, still want more? See if you can do five circles with the right knee, keeping the, or left knee, pardon me, keeping the pelvis super, super still. Change direction. If you're on your abdomen, only hold as long as feels good. Swap sides or rest whenever you like. Same goes for tabletop. When your circles are even, release the left knee. Extend the right arm, palm facing down, sweep the arm forward, and then place your palm. Taking rest whenever you like. If you want more, you're gonna reach the left fingers forward. The right toes back, maybe float the left arm, maybe float the right leg, maybe you stay, maybe you're on the abdomen, maybe you take the left arm to the left, maybe you internally rotate, sweep the arm behind you perhaps, to the lower back or the mid back. <clears throat> you can stay, you can bend the right knee if you like. You can try to keep equal length, hips to armpits. Maybe you do three, five circles in each direction with the right knee. Going the other way, if you're doing circles. Good. Now releasing the right knee if you were doing circles or if your leg was straight. Extending the left arm, palm faces down, arm sweeps forward. Bring your palm to the floor. 
And then from here, two options, either knees wide, big toes touching, hips towards heels, a child's pose, in which case we can stack our fists or our palms under our forehead. We can use a block under the forehead. We can extend our arms. We can pop up under the fingertips. Second option, either a couple of blocks or a book between your palms. Toes tucked, knees and ankles, hips distance. You'd come to your elbows. You'd measure your elbows so they were as wide as your shoulders. You wouldn't want them a lot wider and you wouldn't want them narrower. <clears throat> you'd be squeezing your book or your block with your palms. You could also interlace your fingers, but it is more effective if the hands are as wide as the elbows, as wide as the shoulders. So better to have a book or something between your hands. <clears throat> Shoulder push-ups here, lifting abdomen, lifting ribs. You can think of a bit of an angry kitty back or a strong lift of the abdomen and ribs. And then extension, no tension. You can slide forward and back if you like. And remember, this is the alternative to a child's pose if you want more shoulders versus more rest for that <clears throat> nervous system. Both are very useful depending on the day. You can also lift your knees, of course, or should you require more vigor, you can walk your feet towards your elbows, trying to keep a bend in the knees and a lift in the sit bones. And then you can walk your feet away from your elbows. Coming into more of a plank. <clears throat> Walking it in. Like I say, bending the knees and lifting the sit bones is really useful here. Really gets into the abdomen a bit more too. And then walking it back. And this, of course, good for your shoulders, good for your core. <clears throat> You've got up to 10 more breaths to move here or to be still. You can slide forward and back with the knees lifted too if you want. I also think that it's really useful to push into the feet and think about lifting the knees. If you're not quite lifting them yet, think about it. Don't actually do it, but cultivate all the muscles required if you were to lift them. <clears throat> when you decide it is sufficient, if you have not yet done so, you'll allow yourself to take a little child's pose, head supported on a block or your hands or a book, pillow, whatever you got handy is great. You could even roll up your mat at the end if you were close enough to one end of your mat. <clears throat> and that'll give you a little more height too, hey? Just another way to do it. Take five more breaths. Feel the back of the body expanding as you breathe in. Back of the body contracting as you breathe out. forward onto our hands and knees or with blocks under our hands or to stand and I'll show you lots of different ways to do the same thing we're going to do a simple lunge so you can have your hands up on blocks if you have them feet and knees hips distance right foot steps forward between them or right hand block comes in and we step on the outside knee and foot point out a bit more in this case if we don't have blocks we have two options we can either bring our right hand in a little step on the outside be up on our fingers or our fists, that's a good option if it feels like a good option. If not, come up to stand. Feet at hips distance, knees bent. <clears throat> Step the right foot forward. And then have a bend in both knees. Think right hip back, left hip forward if you want more. <clears throat> you can progressively walk your back foot farther back or your front foot further forward, right? And you could have your hands on your thigh, your hands on your hips. Lifting up the abdomen, squeezing the elbows a little maybe. So lots of ways to do the same thing. If you are on the ground and your hands are on blocks or on the floor, you can lift your left knee if you like, or you can stay as you are. <clears throat> and keep in mind, the lower the block, 
the, the harder it will become. The higher the block, the more lift, the more length you're going to have, and the easier it will be to maintain in terms of the hips. We're going to try to take 10 more breaths, regardless of the option we've selected. Think right hip back, left hip forward. You can eventually think about the right femur drawing back down and in toward the hip socket. Left side of the pelvis lifting higher. So that eventually you're pretty level there. Lungs expanding, lungs contracting. <clears throat> and you can always play with lifting your hands a little bit. Maybe not a lot, maybe a little. Depends on how you feel. And eventually lower your knee if you're on the ground, if you're standing, step one foot back, step the other foot forward. Use whatever height of block you started with. If you're using blocks, remember, you can bring your arm on the inside to step back if you don't have blocks to make it a little more comfortable. You can step on the outside of your hand to come in with the left foot or come forward with the left foot rather. You can step between the blocks if you've got them. You can step on the outside of that left block. All of these are good ways to work the same connections. Right knee walks back as far as you like. You can keep your knee on the ground, drawing the uh, left hip back down and in as you kick your shin forward, or you can lift your knee. If you do lift your knee, I like to think of kicking my shin down toward the ground a little, even though I'm working to straighten the leg. If you're bending in the elbow, pull the elbows apart. And you'll notice if I hyperextend my elbows, it makes it really easy to sink into my joints. If I pull my elbows apart, it creates length everywhere right away. So if you're in a bendy body, top tip, elbows. 10 more breaths. And remember if you're doing the standing version, <clears throat> the closer your feet are to one another, the easier it'll be on the hips and the back and the balance. The farther back you take your standing, your feet, the harder it's going to be. And you can always have your hands against the wall, your hands on your thigh, your hips. All of these are good ways to work it. When you are ready to exit, lower very gradually if you haven't yet. Come up or come from standing back to the mat if you went to standing. Take the left foot back, left hip back. <clears throat> All right, so from here, we're going to come to sit, and you might sit directly on your shins, and that's fine if that's comfortable for you. A lot of us that won't be comfortable. So I recommend if you have a couple of blocks or books or what have you, you can sit on them. Put them between your feet, like so. Stack them evenly, and then come back to sit. And if that feels really comfortable, then I suggest dragging the heels away from you and finding a lift in the front of the ankle. If you want uh, more flexibility in the hips and the spine, start with your ankles. If you want more stability in your shoulders, find your elbows. <laughs> Anyways, another option still, as I say, is just to sit straight on your feet. Some of us might want to sit cross-legged, in which case you can sit right shin in front of left. Uh, you can sit up on any amount of height. The more height you sit on, the bigger a dif bigger difference it'll make. So if you're here and your feet are quite close and your knees are quite high, height will let you walk your feet wider and get those hips a little lower, which will re release those hip flexors quicker, trust me. So whichever option you like, <clears throat> if you, it's really comfortable to sit cross-legged and you want a little bit more still, I've been doing a lot of gomukasana, which is a uh, how face pose <laughs> and it looks a bit like this so you would take your right leg under you start with your legs together your knees bent right leg goes under left leg goes over <clears throat> you're trying to stack the knees and flex the ankles all right so all of these are good options you decide what you prefer and then from here straighten your arms make fists with your arms your hands pardon me forward circles go as big as you can with your circles Think about being right on the center of your sit bones. 
<clears throat> and lengthening the spine any amount you can. Think about straightening the elbows with a teensy micro bend if you are really, really bendy in the elbow. If you know you can pop them like this, bend them a little, right? So they, they look straight, but this is fully straight. <clears throat> Going backwards. Good, and then from here, take the right arm up outside your ear, bring your palm to face back, bend your elbow, take your hand to your upper back. Left arm follows, reach up. Take your left palm to your right elbow, pull the elbows apart. If it feels like too much, you can come further forward at any point. Elbows equal distance from floor. Feels great, you stay. You wanna think about not letting your shoulders crowd your ears, but pulling the elbows apart. So again, elbows, engage them. You're gonna get uh, stability in your shoulders. <clears throat> if it feels really good and you want more, then you have the option of taking the left arm to the left internally rotating, sweeping the arm behind you, and trying to grab your fingers behind your back. Like, so, all right? So, yet another way to do the same thing. It does not matter which one you do, they are all going to provide benefit. Fix your gaze or close your eyes. If it feels really great, you can tuck your chin and look a little to the left if you want to. Elbows pull apart regardless of which option you've selected. Lengthen the spine. Equal weight on both sides of pelvis. Equal engagement in the feet. Remember you can adjust your seated position at any time. Bringing the chin back through center if you turn your gaze. Releasing the left arm, releasing the right arm. Letting the palms rest. Big inhale, shoulders lift. Big exhale. And then from here, you're gonna let your hands rest in your lap or you can take the hands behind you and clasp opposite fist or wrist or you could interlace the fingers and straighten out the arms, pulling the elbows apart. Take your right ear to your right shoulder. Turn your chin toward that right shoulder. Head comes back through center, left ear comes down. We turn the chin toward the left. Bring your head back through center. If your arms are behind you, release them, and then release your legs. So come forward either onto hands and knees or extend the legs in front of you. You can point and flex the ankles or you can come onto hands and knees and stretch out the ankles the same way we did earlier. Whatever your preference is, both are really good options. Circles if you're seated with the legs extended. If you want bigger circles, go wider with your feet. Think stable knees, only moving at the ankle. Knee is completely still. Change direction. Not only will you get stronger knees as a result, but you'll gain more ankle flexibility too. Which in my um, opinion, it serves you really well when it comes to hiking and such. The more flexible your hips, um, knees and ankles are, well really the more flexible your ankles and your hips are, the more stable your knees are, the easier hiking is. Flexing, curling, pointing, flipping, especially when you're taking like a big step up, if the hips are more flexible and strong, it's much, much easier to take a bigger stride, especially when you're going up the hill. And then it'll keep your ankles strong and safe, no matter how active you are. Great, now we're gonna switch our seated position. So you're either gonna come back onto your shins, onto the height, or straight onto the shins. You can do it with tuck toes this time if you wanted to build a little more heat in the feet. 
<clears throat> or you sit with the opposite crossing, left leg in front for Sukhasana or cross-legged position, or Gomukhasana. So this time it would be left leg under, right leg over, if that's your choice. Whatever you like is great. Choose an option that does not create any knee pain whatsoever. If it does, change it. Flex your feet, lengthen the spine, think of stacking the knees if you're going for this last option. Sit bones equal distance from floor, equal distance from front of mat. Lengthen as, much, as best you can. Fingertips touch shoulders, try to engage with every digit, especially little fingers, forward circles. Try not to let your neck go back and forth. Getting the deep neck flexors involved by bringing the head back just a little. It's as though your forehead is rooting forward and the back of the head is rooting back equally. So we're not letting the head come really far forward without equally rooting it back. We're always moving in at least two directions, if not 50. <laughs> Backwards. Try to get those elbows to tap in front of the chest if you can. Try to resist the legs moving. No matter which seated position you're, you've selected, pressing into the tops of the feet, the sides of the feet, pressing into the shins, the outer <clears throat> ankle, the outer hip, whatever portion of your body touches the floor, think of connecting and pushing that portion of the body to the floor equally lengthening the rest of the body away from the ground. <clears throat> as big a circle as you can get. Fantastic, and then rest your hands. Here we're going to do the opposite side in terms of the shoulder stretch. So there'll be left arm coming up, palm facing back. Bend your elbow, hand to upper back. Squeeze with the palm here. Right arm follows, arm is straight. You lengthen, you bend, you pull the elbows apart as you clasp the left elbow with the right hand. You're not letting your shoulders lift and kind of crush your ears, but you're pulling the elbows apart. And you'll notice if you pull your elbows apart, it'll automatically give your neck more space <clears throat> and prevent your shoulders from crowding your ears. If you feel too much, you go further forward, right? Elbows, same distance from ground. If it feels great, you need more. Then right arm to right, internally rotate, sweep it behind and try to clasp the fingers. And you might clasp, you might not. It's very common for one side to be of, re of uh, easy to connect and the other side not. You can use a strap or a tie or whatever you have handy, or you can press the hands into the back Reach the fingers together and pull the elbows apart. <clears throat> Fix the gaze or close the eyes. Should you want more in your neck, you have the option of tucking the chin a little. Option one, second option, looking to the right a little. Lungs expanding, lungs contracting. Remember, you can adjust your position at any time. You can add more height underneath your pelvis. You can straighten out the legs. You can sit in the chair. You can do the standing. I mean, there's endless options, really. And then if you turned your head, looking back to center, lifting the head so you look directly forward, and then releasing right arm, releasing left, releasing right leg, releasing left, extending the legs, and releasing the arms. And then take the hands behind you, pointing and flexing. If you'd prefer to be on the hands and knees, and perhaps you sat on your shins, <clears throat> then extending the ankles that way. And pointing for circles. Go the other way. Flexing, curling, pointing, flipping. Flexing, curling, pointing, flipping. And
and then flex your feet. We're gonna finish off with a twist. So you're gonna work with your knees bending a little bit here. You can have your knees and ankles at hips distance apart or even a shoulders distance apart, or you can have them together. All of these are good options. It doesn't matter which one you do. They're all gonna be good for you. You don't wanna go legs together unless it feels really good. If it doesn't feel good, question why you're doing it, do less of it. Start with the hands behind you, lift the chest, lift the abdomen. Left hand comes to the knees. If your legs are apart, you can start with your left hand on your left knee and your right hand behind you. If that felt really good, you could reach over to the right knee. <clears throat> Lengthening the spine as best you can, pulling those elbows apart as you twist towards your right. And if the legs were together and it felt really good, you could take your elbow outside your knee if you wanted. You could even push into the palms here. If you could keep the knees level, that would be a good option. Spread your toes. 10 more breaths. Think about the left abdomen, left ribs going toward the right. Whenever you decide it is sufficient, please do not rush. You can stay as long as you like. You'd release your hand to your knees, your hands behind you. You can either stay with the legs a hips distance apart. <clears throat> you can always bring them a little wider if you felt too much. You can support your knees with uh, blocks if you happen to have them whenever you like. Take a break in between if you need. If it feels great, let's be together. Always up to you. Left hand comes behind, right hand to right knee, lengthening. If that feels really great, your right hand can walk over to your left knee, pulling the elbows apart, regardless of whether the legs are together or apart, same concept. You're twisting towards the left hand side, both elbows are reaching away from one another, you're keeping the knees level, the hips in line with the knees and vice versa. If it felt really, really good, it was comfortable to place the right elbow outside the, uh, the left knee, then you could, and you could touch your palms here if you didn't need the support of the left hand. You gotta pull the right femur to you, lengthen the left femur away from you to find that stability there. Fix your gaze, maybe turn your gaze to the left and then fix it, maybe looking directly to the side is much more comfortable. Listen to your neck, don't force it. Think of lengthening the neck, pulling those collarbones apart, finding equal length on both sides of the chest. That's the priority over how far you turn your head, right? And you want equal rooting forward, equal rooting back. You're not letting the head come forward more than you're rooting it back, okay? Up to 10 more breaths. There we go. Good, and then nice and slow, releasing. Hands come to knees, lengthen. Hands can come behind you to lengthen. Release the legs, a little pointing and flexing. A few circles, go both ways. And flexing, curling, pointing, and flipping. Relax. And we'll finish uh, with one last asana. Feet together, knees apart. Very calming for the nervous system, this one. We want about a 90 degree angle bend in the knee. That's what you're aiming for. And I'll show you a version that's very similar on your back too, if you'd prefer. <clears throat> if you have blocks or anything you can stack really, like a firm pillows, a bolster would work well. You can stack your head on them. You could stack your elbows. 
you know, it depends on the height though. Each person's a little different height wise. So you just mess around with it until it's comfortable. But this one can be quite comfortable often where you rest your elbows on whatever height you've got handy and then rest your forehead on the heels of the hand. Just in case some of you do have a bolster, this is what it would look like with bolster. And you can hang out with the hands behind you the whole time too. And you can also just let yourself hang, right? So maybe bringing your head closer to the feet or <clears throat> letting the head hang. You can hold the ankles, the shins, the knees, interlace over the toes. Depending on what's comfortable, you might have a little bit height, a little bit of height outside the lower legs, and then use that for support. Feel the back of the body expanding as you breathe in. Feel the back of the body contracting as you breathe out. Try to take five to ten more breaths. if you have not yet, bringing your knees together if you have not yet. Now to finish off, you could do legs up the wall or you could do Shavasana. Uh, I wouldn't recommend legs up the wall as Shavasana unless it was very, very comfortable. Barely, no, barely any stretch, no effort, right? Hands behind thighs, come down gradually if you haven't yet. Extending the legs, extending the arms. <clears throat> I like to bend my knees and roll my baby toes toward the floor a bit as I lengthen the leg. This allows the hip to externally rotate a little bit more firmly. Clench and relax the palms. You want your wrists in line with your waist. <clears throat> lengthening the neck, lengthening the upper back perhaps. Remember that you can place support underneath your knees. Anything you've got handy that you could roll up and put under the knees would make a huge difference not only in your knees, but in your lower back, uh, basically the whole spine, it'll make a difference in your hips, make a difference in your shoulders even. A little bit of height under the head can have a really positive effect too, if being flat on the ground doesn't feel quite right. And close your eyes. And focus on your body. Lying on your mat, heavy on the floor. Resist the urge to fidget and adjust. Concentrate on your body, your breathing from the inside. Concentrate on stillness.
you are ready to do so, and please do not rush. You can 100% ignore me and tune me out uh, if you prefer to stay longer in your Shavasana and your rest. It's incredibly therapeutic to stay in Shavasana longer, especially when you have a lot of external stress in the world right now. And it's affecting all of us so differently. So give yourself permission to be however you are, uh, as long as you're you know, taking care of yourself. And the more yoga you practice, chances are the better you're going to feel. That being said, you might feel a lot while you're practicing. So keep in mind, um, it's very normal to have emotions when you practice. You can feel happy, sad, angry, all sorts of different things. Um, all of which are totally normal. And it will pass. It always does. So becoming aware of your body, slowly waking yourself up if you're ready to do so. Moving fingers, toes, stretching the arms, beginning to bend the knees, and walk the feet toward you. Rolling to one side and pushing yourself up into any seated position you like. And I'm going to finish off with uh, the traditional closing chant for my lineage, so Om Shanti Shanti Hi Shri Gurudhi Namaha. But feel free to do whatever you're comfortable with in your own space. You can touch your hands in Namaskara or rest them in whatever way you prefer. Big inhale. Om Shanti Shanti everybody and I'll look forward to seeing you soon <laughs> hopefully in person really soon too all right take care